every nap, I don't have to clear my throat because I keep having to clear it over and over, and I'm hoping it doesn't get on your nerves. But I want to talk to you about a message that we've been talking about for a couple weeks now on God's plan, Satan's plan, and your plan. You know, you've got to be convinced by now that God has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 1, five clearly says it, that before you were even born, before you were even conceived, that God had a special assignment and a special work for you to carry out. So you need to know that and be absolutely convinced God has a plan for your life. I like to think of it as he has a clipboard with your name on it, and he is fully expecting you to carry out this assignment while you're here on the earth. So get that settled in your heart once and for all. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not just supposed to live your life just from day to day wondering what you should do. You know, what's my purpose for even being here? You got to find God's plan for your life. And then also Satan has a plan for your life. Now his plan is to distract you from God's plan. He doesn't want you discovering God's plan, so he's going to do everything in his power to distract you, to deceive you, and to tempt you. And that's how Satan works. He tempts you by finding, you know, he brings all these different things into your life to find out where you're weak. Satan's plan appeals to your greatest vulnerability. In other words, he's been watching you. He's been observing your behavior. He's been listening to what you say, what comes out of your mouth. And when he finds a weakness in your flesh, he says, aha, that's where she's weak. That's where he's weak. And I'm going to bring that same thing into her life over and over and over and over until she falls. You know, I like to think of it as like traps, like mouse traps. Satan has traps that he has set up throughout your life to get you to fall into this trap, hoping that you will feel crippled and disabled for the rest of your life because you fell for his trap. Well, he knows that we're not just going to fall for a trap. You know, even a a disgusting mouse, and I'm sorry if you're a mouse lover, but I can't stand them. Even if a mouse, you know, saw this trap, he's not just going to step on the trap. So the focal point has to be the cheese. The mouse has to get his eyes on the cheese, and it has to be appealing enough that then he falls for the trap. So the trap is disguised by the cheese. Well, Satan works the same way in our lives. He doesn't just set up traps that he knows you're going to, fall for knowing that it's a trap. The trap has to be deceiving. It has to be appealing, something that appeals to you. And what appeals to you may not appeal to me, but that's just it. Satan knows what appeals to you. And you know, it could be um, a person that you're not supposed to be with. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be lust, pornography. It could be food. It could be a, a number of different things. But Satan knows that whatever it is that, that tempts you, that lures you, it has to be appealing to your flesh or you would never fall for it. Now, once he gets you to fall for that thing that's tempting to you, that's when the trap goes off and he is rejoicing because he's pulling you away from God's plan for your life. Well, in order for you to get free from these traps, because we've all fallen into them. I've fallen into way too many traps in my life. But the, the way you get out of this trap or to not fall into it again is you've not only got to get your eyes off of the temptation, get your eyes off of it, but you've got to get your eyes on a plan. You've got to get your eyes on a vision for your life. You know, let's say, for example, that your weakness is food. And, you know, when you get off work and you go home, you're tempted to just eat. Just eat and eat. You're just bored, so you eat. Or just out of routine, you just eat. Well, it's not enough for you to just say, I'm not going to think about this cupcake. I am not going to think about it. I'm not even going to look at the cupcake. I'm not going to eat that cupcake. (laughs) You can't just say that over and over and over and think that you're not going to be thinking about the cupcake. Because the fact that you're saying, I'm not going to think about it, means you're thinking about it. They say in dieting, it's not enough to just get try so hard to get your mind off of food. You have to get your mind on something else. You have to get it on a plan. So if it was food, then you would say, okay, my plan is when I get off work so that I'm not tempted to just sit around and eat, then as soon as I get off work and I get home, I'm going to put my jogging clothes on and I'm going to go for a 20-minute walk, but I'm going to listen to the word while I'm out there walking. And then when I get back, I'm going to have dinner, but I'm done with eating because I have a plan. I'm going to go in my closet and I'm going to straighten up all my shoes and I'm going to get rid of all those shoes that I don't wear anymore. And that's my plan. But while I'm cleaning my closet, I'm going to be hearing the word while I'm doing it. 
Then I'm going to take a bath. Then I'm going to read one chapter in Proverbs, and then I'm going to bed. Now, that's just an example of not only getting your mind off the food, but getting your mind on something else. And, you know, it works in every area. If there's a person that you don't need to be talking to, you don't need to be emailing or whatever it is, it's not enough for you to just be alone and be going, I am not going to email him. I'm not going to call him or I'm not going to answer the phone when he rings. No, you have to get your mind on something else. And I'm such a believer in getting your mind on the word of God, because the more you hear the word, I say this all the time, but the light goes on in your mind and you begin to see things that you didn't see when you fell for the trap last time. So hearing the word is what will open your mind to the truth and help you stay undeceived. So I want to challenge you this week to get a plan, fight your fears with a plan. Don't just try to get your mind off of the temptations and off of those things that you know aren't God's best for your life, but get your mind on a plan, get a project going in your house. Maybe it's to get organized, to get cleaned, whatever it is, get your mind on a plan, but be hearing the word at the same time, because it will do wonders to help you walk right into God's perfect plan for your life. I want to encourage you to get this message, God's plan, Satan's plan, and your plan, because I'm going to teach you a lot more in this CD about how to get those distractions out of your life and how to get focused so you can walk into God's plan. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week.